that's one purpose. Uh, and uh, one of the side benefits is that Krishna will be especially pleased with us. And whatever we need, he is uh, more than willing to provide to his devotees. Uh, certainly the necessities of life, if not more. And we see sometimes devotees have so much opulence and wealth. It is not true that a devotee of Krishna necessarily has to be poor or to uh, some devotees uh, have uh, access, uh, their life uh, develops in such a way that they have a lot of money. Uh, so depending upon if that serves Krishna's purpose and he feels that it's not going to hurt our devotion. Uh, we see very often when, when people who haven't had money, when they get a big inheritance or they win some prize or they get some uh, new job with a lot of salary, uh, they go overboard and they misspend the money and they misuse the money. And sometimes even they get involved in activities which uh, hurt their relationship with uh, their employer and hurt their relationship with their parents. It happens. So Krishna is careful not to uh, let us get in trouble. And that's one reason that uh, very often uh, we may not have, we may not be wealthy, we may not have access in our life to a lot of money. And one reason may be that Krishna feels it won't be it. Number one, we don't need it. And number two, uh, it won't be good for us. So Maharaj Yudhisthira, he is so devoted and near the end of his purport, uh, Sri Prabhupada uses this word, those who are 100% devotees get the full-fledged mercy of the Lord. So when Krishna feels that even when, that whether things are difficult in our life or things are easy in our life, we're never going to give up our devotion to him, then it doesn't matter what we have or don't have. I mean, in the spiritual world, we are all so fabulously wealthy. You know, in, in the Middle East, uh, uh, in Saudi Arabia, in Kuwait, those different countries, there are some uh, families that are incredibly wealthy beyond our imagination. They cannot even spend all the money they have. So the spiritual world, <laughs> that gives us some idea, a small idea of what the spiritual world is. It is incredibly beautiful and luxurious, uh, and even the heavenly planet. So that is actually our normal uh, way of life. It is actually not normal to be without. Uh, our eternal life is just uh, incredibly uh, wealthy and luxurious. So we better start practicing uh, to to be able to have that, uh, and how, and so the demigods, so the demigods, the demigods are very devoted to Krishna, and that's uh, one reason why they're in the heavenly planets, because they're so devoted to Krishna, and in the spiritual world, in Vaikuntha, and Goloka, everyone is there because, number one, they want to be there, and number two, they are uh, cent percent devotees of Krishna. So that so when we are in some lacking, you know, we lose a job and we don't have a job for some weeks or some months, or our health is not good for some time, or uh, different challenges, things are not going uh, smoothly. Uh, we can we can think that this is an opportunity to show my sincerity that I'm not a devotee of God just to get things, right? Uh, there, there's nothing wrong with, with, with praying to Krishna for uh, things that we want. Uh, but if that's the only reason we go to the temple or the mosque, of course, that's, that's not very 
uh, pure devotion. It's almost like a business. You know, you, when you run out of eggplant, you go to the, to the market and you give some money and you get eggplant. And you don't really care about the person who's selling it, right? Usually. Although you may be a little friendly. That way, he or she might give you a better price. So, but that's not a loving relationship, usually. So it is good, it is always good uh, to have some kind of relationship with Krishna, uh, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But pure devotion means that whether Krishna gives what I want or doesn't give what I think I want, uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, I am always going to serve Krishna because that's who I am. What else would I do? I am. A t I mean, it's not just a belief, it's a fact. I am a tiny, tiny little speck, part of God. And it's my, it's my identity. It, it's really who I am to act in a way which is pleasing to Krishna. So we can understand how, uh, how much darkness there is in this material world, in Africa, in Europe, uh, in France, in Kenya, in the United States, everywhere, Nairobi. There's so much darkness uh, of forgetfulness. So sacrifice is a way of waking up. We talk about the sacrifice of Sankirtan, when we sit and chant our japa, what are we doing? We're, we're waking up. We're becoming more conscious of our relationship with Krishna. So Maharaj Yudhisthira and Maharaj Ambarish and these different great devotee kings, Prahlad Maharaj, uh, Krishna thought that it would be good for them and it would not hurt them. Uh, not just good for them, that it was part of his purpose that they had uh, great wealth and influence and power. So then uh, Srila Prabhupada goes on to, to discuss how Mara Yudhisthira only performed three jagyas. So I was saying about the different ages. So in Satya Yuga, the jagya, or the way of waking up to Krishna, is to just meditate, you know, sitting, uh, and meditating on the super soul. And then in Treta Yuga, the method, the main method, uh, was to perform incredible sacrifices where lots of ghee and grains were thrown into the fire and it would cost a lot of money to do these sacrifices, depending what kind of sacrifice. And then in Dwarpa Yuga, the main uh, sacrifice is, is deity, was deity worship. And in the age of Kali, as, as we know, it is just uh, singing and chanting, glorifying uh, God, Krishna. So, but, so here it's described that Maharaj Yudhisthira, he only performed three of, like uh, uh, Mataji uh, Kartika was said at the very beginning, one meaning of sacrifice is like the fire sacrifice. Many of us are familiar with that, where we have a fire and there's different prayers and we put sesame seeds and barley and bananas and ghee, and different things into the fire. So that, that uh, a general one meaning of, of sacrifice, uh, a kind of sacrifice. So Maharaj used it, that's what he was doing. And also what's called an ashramada where long ago they would sacrifice a horse or even a cow and then they would bring it back to life which we can't imagine but they had more power uh, so they would chant different mantras and the horse would be brought back to life uh, so Maharaj Judasthira he performed three of these uh, and became so opulent because we may remember after the battlefield, after the battle of Kurukshetra, eventually Maharaj Yudhisthira became the emperor of the world. And all the different subordinate kings were bowing down to him. Uh, and he had fabulous wealth. Uh, 
uh, but King Ashur, who was it? Uh, the King of, of Heaven, uh, performed a hundred judges. There was some instance of that. Uh, but Maharaj Yudhisthira didn't have to do hundreds of judges. He only did three. And this is a very, something uh, encouraging for us to remember that in general, uh, not always, but in general, uh, by our devotion to Krishna, things will, will there'll be more luck on our side. Uh, we'll be, Krishna will help us to have what we need in life. We're looking for a job and somehow we'll find out about uh, an opening somewhere or the manager of our department will appreciate our work and recommend we get uh, a raise in our wages or salary and many different things. Uh, Krishna will help us a little quicker. And that's, so So, so Srila Prabhupada talks about being equal uh, near the end of the purport that Krishna is equal, his mercy is equally distributed. So there's, a, there's an interesting meaning to that uh, we may have heard about. It's just like a, uh, a father or mother. Suppose you have four children. So you love all of them. You definitely love every one of those children. You care about them. Uh, on the, but at the same time, uh, one of the children, suppose they're 19, 22, 26, the older, you know, adults. So there's one who's calling you every week and asking how you are, and asking your advice, and visiting, and sending gifts. And obviously this, this this child is, is showing a special affection and is showing that they want a closer relationship with you than the other children. So you may deal with them differently. One of them may say, well, how come you call, you know, this one uh, so often and you send her gifts, but you're not sending me. Uh, so you can say, well, that, that, uh, she's, this is what she wants from me obviously. She's showing this special interest to have this particular kind of close relationship. So there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, it's, and it's not that you don't love the other children, and it's not that you won't help them. So Krishna is like that. So for devotees, because we show uh, more interest in him, then he shows more interest in us. That's all. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Srila Prabhupada describes that as perfect equality. So uh, there's another, many, but there's another important uh, sentence here where Srila Prabhupada says the sun rays are equally distributed, but still there are some places which are always dark. So we might think about how the government may make student loans to go to college or uh, farm the farmers some special subsidy or grant. But if some person doesn't take advantage, it's not the government's fault. Uh, so we as children of Krishna, some of us don't take advantage of the relationship. There are children who want not much to do with their parents. Don't call me, I'm busy. I, and that's their choice. Uh, and because that's their attitude, uh, the parents don't think of them as much, perhaps. Uh, and it's the same with Krishna. Uh, so if we keep ourselves close to Krishna, then we will uh, have more of the benefit. <laughs> that's common sense. So if we are close to the sun, if we are outside in the sun, then we will be in life. And if we go inside or we hide underneath a boat, then we'll be in darkness. And that's not, that's our choice. We keep ourselves from darkness. So on, on that note, when we, just like now, we're, we're hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. So when we show interest in Krishna, he will uh, come towards us. It is said that if we take a step towards Krishna, he will take a hundred steps towards us. 
And that's even, we, see, we talked about that, that, it, that even among humans, if you show interest in someone, they'll show interest in you, at least for a little while. It, it's, it's almost a mystical kind of thing. Uh, so when we show Krishna, uh, interest in Krishna by singing his name, hearing about him, etc., thinking about him, then it, it catches his attention. Oh, you're thinking of me, you know? So that's how that works. So are there any questions or comments so far? There, there's a lot in this purport. Questions, discussion? Are there any questions or comments? Okay, I think it is quite clear. There are no more questions. Oh, Victor. That's okay. Do you have a question, Victor Prabhu? No, Prabhuji, there are no questions. Well, then I'll go on to the next verse. I'll read this. Hare Krishna. Yes. Oh. Is that Peter? Did he have a question? It's okay, Prabhuji. I think they might have network ch challenges. I'll ask them to write it on the uh, chat in case if they have a question. But let's so go to text seven. Amantra Pandu Putramstra, Jayu Dava Sanyuta, Vaipayan Adi Beer Be Fry, Pujitai Prati Pujita. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Shri Prabhupada. Lord Sri Krishna then prepared for his departure. He invited the sons of Pandu, after having been worshipped by the Brahmins, headed by Sri Vyasadeva. The Lord also reciprocated the greeting. Purport. Apparently, Lord Sri Krishna was a Kshatriya and was not worshipable by the Brahmins. But the Brahmins present there, headed by Srila Vyasadeva, all knew him to be the personality of Godhead, and therefore they worshipped him. The Lord reciprocated the greetings just to honor the social order that a Chatra is obedient to the orders of the Brahmin. Although Lord Sri Krishna was always offered the respects due the Supreme Lord from all responsible orders, the Lord never deviated from the customary usages between the four orders of society. The Lord purposely observed all these social customs so that others would follow him in the future. Does anyone, uh, can anyone think of uh, a verse in Bhagavad Gita? Uh, I think it's in the third chapter uh, that uh, talks about this, how leaders should uh, show by example. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Um, yes. I think it's it's King Janak who led by example. Right. That uh Yad Yad Atarati Shrestha, uh, that verse that begins. Uh, that uh, what's that girl? Uh, that whatever a great man performs, common people follow. And whatever examples he sets uh, is for the whole society. So this is a, a very appropriate for this purpose. Of course, parents and uh, government officials and any kind of leader of, of people should show by their example how to act, uh, should show by their example uh, specifically how to be a devotee of Krishna, how to be a good religious person. So uh, it is such an amazing, almost unbelievable kind of thing to think about uh, for many people in unimaginable and because it, it is not discussed like this very much, how God comes he incarnates into this temporary world, the material world, and moves around just like 
uh, a prime minister might visit a, print, a prison. So the prime minister is, certainly is not obliged to be there. It is by the choice of the prime minister or the government official that they are temporarily inside the prison. And they move around and they walk and they talk and they do this and do that. And then they go. So Krishna, he manifests himself in different avatars, in different incarnations. And he looks, can look, just the same as any other human. Uh, in fact, in the ninth chapter, Lord Krishna describes it uh, as famous uh, instruction that those who are uh, foolish and low-minded, they criticize uh, uh, the form of Krishna as a human being. Uh, Lord Krishna says, Abhijanati mam mudha. And mudha means dumb like a donkey or dumb like an ass, specifically. Stupid. Uh, Blockheaded, dull headed, dull headed. So Lord Krishna says, Abhijanati mamudha, manushim tanum ashrita. Tanum means form. And manu, manushina, means like a human. Uh, so those who are demonic and ignorant, foolish, they're just foolish. We see there are different types of human, different types of intelligence. Just because we all stand on two feet doesn't mean we have the same level of intelligence or consciousness or wisdom. We all know that. Some people really do. Unfortunately, they act in stupid ways, and make very bad decisions and suffer. Uh, thank you for the verb. So, uh, Lord Krishna, when he incarnates, of course, as the Supreme Personality of God, he's going to show uh, the best of example. And in the incarnation as Krishna, after he manifested his childhood pastimes in uh, Vrindavan, Gokula. Uh, then he went to Mathura and killed his demonic uncle, Kamsa, and went to the Gurukula, and then transferred the whole population of Mathura to Dwarka. He had uh, Vishwakarma, the demigod, engineer, architect, uh, prepare a huge city in the ocean uh, off the west coast of India, Gujarat. Uh, and he was the uh, king, or Maharaj, uh, his Ugrase, his grandfather was the king, but Lord Krishna was, of course, ultimately the supreme Kshatriya. Uh, uh, warrior, Chetra means uh, protector, uh, Shat means to protect. So Lord Krishna was the supreme Chetra, and he showed the example that uh, those who are kings and administrators, they pay respect uh, to the Brahmin. And because Lord Krishna was playing, it's just like a play. We say Leela. Dwarka Leela, Matura Leela, Rindavan Leela, Navadweep Leela. So Lord Jagannath uh, Leela. So Lord Krishna, he played. He's able to do that because he is totally uh, transcendental to material, materialistic uh, thinking. In the material world, we are often always influenced by materialistic tendencies that we, 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 we're needing. We need this, we need that, we want this, we want that. Temporary thing. Whereas in our original spiritual health, when we are, the more spiritually healthy we are, we'll feel more self-satisfied. Atmarama. We won't, we won't need. Na sochati, na kankati. Uh, we will be free of lamentation and hankering 
That is the materialistic way, right? We see everyone around us. We're all lamenting. I lost this. I don't have this. I can't have that. Lamenting. It is said one of the characteristics of someone of Shudra mentality is lamenting. They're always depressed and sad and lamenting. Uh, but as we uh, develop wisdom and self-realization, we become more self-satisfied. Atmarama. We don't need as much. Uh, we're not as attacked. We're not as greedy. We're, we don't become as jealous or envious because we don't need, we don't want, we don't need to have uh, as much or, or any jewelry or big house or car or position or power or to be thin. <laughs> uh, so many materialistic kind of uh, improvement that, that we humans hanker for. Not so uh, the sochati means lament, lamenting. So we become free of lamenting for not having something. Uh, and we become free of kankriti, wanting something. More and more and more. So Lord Krishna, he is the supreme spiritual person and he is completely uh, ananda. He is full of joy. Uh, as we become more advanced in Krishna consciousness, one way to tell is that we'll be more cheerful. We'll, we'll feel more happy, even if something happens that other people might become sad. Uh, we'll be less sad and less disturbed and, and, more, and just above it, above the dualities of this material world, transcendental. That doesn't mean we're not responsible. It doesn't mean that, that we don't care about things in this world, but we're not uh, stuck to it. And that's wonderful. Uh, I, just, I mean, it, to me, if there's anything like extreme wealth, that's extreme wealth. That you can be happy anywhere, automatically. <laughs> and even if things happen that, you know, challenges and reverses and losses, they're still happy or more happy. That, that's amazingly wealthy because most of the time, always, people are thinking if I have more money, more wealth, more stuff, more things, I'll be more happy. And it's just like a donkey chasing a carrot that's hanging in front of the carrot's nose. You know, they hang a carrot or, or some hay in front of a donkey so it keeps walking. <laughs> but it, it doesn't get the carrot or the... Or the grass uh, when it wants it. So that is materialistic life. So Lord Krishna, he's completely about that and he can play. Uh, we, we may have heard this word avaduta. It means uh, a human being who is so transcendental, they act in ways which <laughs> we would say is crazy. They do things that people don't usually do. Because it doesn't matter to them if people think bad about them or, or say bad things or think negatively. That, that is so uh, part of the bodily concept of life. Uh, so Lord Krishna, so he can play. He can have 16,000 wives. But, but, but he's not attached to them in some materialistic way. It, it is... Oh, you want me as a husband. Okay, I will act like a husband. If, if that pleases you and that's the way you want to love me, then I'll act like that. But he's completely unattached in a materialistic way. With, and and this, this can be unbelievable to many people. Uh, there's a saying, Atmavat Manyate Jagat, that usually we humans, we look at things from our own small point of view. And if we haven't experienced something, we tend to, it's difficult, it can become difficult for us to, to accept it. Well, there was, uh, what was that? Uh, it, very often, uh, oh, so-and-so did this. No, she didn't, she didn't do that. Well, why are you saying that? Well, I could never do that. And it, it is almost a pathetic, narrow kind of uh, 
I mean, it's understandable because of course we look at things according to our experience, but if we are stubborn about it, that is called the, the frog in the well. The little frog is in the small puddle and the other friend frog says, oh, there's a big ocean. You can't imagine how big it is. And then the frog keeps inflating his belly with air until he explodes, trying to understand it with, you know, well, no, is it this big? Is it this? No, you can't even begin to imagine. So there are many things that are there. At the moment, we don't know about them. That's called humility. I don't know everything. And I can always learn something. So there is, this is how we might explain it to someone. That I, I know this sounds fantastic. But there's many things that we learn, and this is just another thing to learn, that by yoga, by spiritual practice, you, a, a person can become so unattached uh, that they, they can have vast wealth like Maharaj Yudhisthira or Ambarish, and it doesn't matter for them. They don't care about it. Or almost nil. It's not like other people. They can have uh, 10 wives. Uh, a very elevated pure devotee and his mentality is nothing or not anything like an ordinary man who is uh, stuck in the three modes of material nature, lower modes of nature. So Lord Krishna, he is completely transcendental. He's full of joy. He's full of bliss and he does leela. You want me as a child? Okay. Even though I'm God, I'll act like a child. If that gives you happiness as my devotee, then I'll do that. Sometimes parents, they'll, they'll do things with their children, right? And it's not that we really want to do them. It's not that we're sitting down with our, with our, with our daughter or maybe our son. But anyway, usually with our daughter, we're having tea, right? We're, we're having a play with tea and biscuit. And so we play with them. But we're not stuck on that. So uh, even we humans do things like that. So Krishna is like that. And when he comes in this world, he follows 99% uh, of the time, uh, all of the usual uh, ways that a person in that position should act. Yad yad atarati Krishna, uh, that whatever um, a great man does, others follow, and whatever uh, actions he takes sets an example for them. I'll stop here. Any comments or questions? Hare Krishna Prabhuji. There is a question on the chat. This is by Victor Prabhu. He's asking if chanting is the only sacrifice recommended for this age of Kali, why are deities still installed in the temple? That's very good. That's a, that's a thoughtful question. Uh, because it's helpful. It's helpful to the chanting. That's the way to look at everything, actually, that all the different rules and regulations, they are there to help us chant and hear about Krishna. So Srila Prabhupada has specifically spoken about that, that the deity worship, right? When you do the deity worship, you have to be clean, right? You have to keep your body clean. You have to keep your mind clean. Uh, you have to be punctual, which uh, helps develop discipline. Uh, so that is helpful so that when we do chant Hare Krishna, we'll be able to chant more purely. But if for some reason uh, we were not able to do that, we can still attain complete total perfection simply by chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, or any of the unlimited divine names of Krishna. Is that all right? It's helpful. All right, Krishna Prabhuji, Victor Prabhuji has another question before we go on to Panchali Mahaji. Uh, it says, um, when I take to this sacrifice of chanting the holy name of the Lord with conviction and my parents do not want anything to do with it, do they get any benefit because they gave me birth? Yeah. Yes, uh, those we have a relationship with, uh, we can 
pick up simple reactions if we influence them to do something simple. And if in some way we are responsible for or we help someone to serve Krishna, we also get benefit. Yeah, just like I think we read last week that there are six or seven different people involved in eating meat and they all suffer reactions. So it works the other way too, that there's a number of persons involved, can be involved in influencing a good action. Yes, actually it is said that if we become pure devotees, seven generations of our ancestors will be liber liberated uh, from their simple reactions. So if we want to do the best, if we want to give our parents or grandparents the best, best thing we can do in our life, be a pure devotee of Krishna. You'll take them back to God. That's pretty awesome. You know, because sometimes we think, oh, they're unhappy with me temporarily or they're mad at me. It doesn't matter. Just be a pure devotee. They don't know what sometimes what's the best thing. Uh, Thank you very much, Prabhuji. Um, Panchali Mataji has a question. Panchali, kindly unmute and ask your question. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, thank you for the wonderful class. Um, so my question is more around uh, the spiritual world, Prabhuji, as you were talking about earlier. So we know in the spiritual world, there's a, um, there's a Vrindavan, um, there is Gokul, there is Matara and Dwarka. So, um, so, so where can we get the full picture of the spiritual world? I, I, I didn't quite understand. Where, where, where do we find a full picture of uh, the spiritual world? Uh. Different places that I, I can I can think of, uh, and you can look at it after class if you want anytime. There's no uh, qualification needed. Uh, if you look in the Chaitanya Charitamrita yeah. in the Madhula, yes. Lord Chaitanya instructs Sanatana Goswami. There is complete teaching of uh, Krishna Bhakti. Mm -hmm. uh, and to make it easier, uh, Sita Prabhupada has summarized um, and also the uh, Lord Chaitanya instructs Rupa Goswami in the teachings of Lord Chaitanya. And that is one of the uh, four or five main scriptures that we should study in our life. And it's called the teachings of Lord Chaitanya. Uh, and in there, you will find everything. More than you could want. Thank you very much, Prabhuji. Yeah, it, because it always makes me curious because, um, yeah, I don't, because uh, in this material world, we don't know, we, we see um, a very perverted react, um, perverted picture of everything. So, right. for, so for us to know what the ideal is and what the spiritual world looks like. Um, let, me, so. let me add to that. So someone may say, okay, that's what's in the book. <laughs> yeah. well, where did that information come from? So there are, there are specific descriptions. Uh, there's one of the Puranas is called the Padma Purana. And yeah. if you were to read in that, there are specific verses describing uh, Krishna and the spiritual world. And uh, so, th so then the next is uh, the revelation that Sridhar Vyasadeva is an incarnation of Krishna, and he knows. And mm -hmm. so he, uh, given the information, Lord Chaitanya as Krishna knows, uh, without quoting any specific uh, text necessarily. Is that all right? Yes, Prabhuji. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. I, wa I, wanna, I, I wanna add quickly that, mm -hmm. uh, and I've mentioned this before, that sometimes we may meet someone who is involved in, in Shiva Puja, Ganesh Puja, Durga Puja. Uh, and uh, as it might be appropriate, we can, we can share with them that, that that's all right, that, that's nice. And, if you, and one way, actually the best way 
to please your Ganeshji or Shivaji is to chant Krishna Bhajan. Hmm. Yeah. And, and if they're a little uh, sincere, they're, oh, really? Okay. But then let me sit before Shivaji and I'll chant Hare Krishna. And he will. He'll be very yeah. pleased. No, that, that's way, yeah. that way it's called inclusive. That it's not that there are devotees of Krishna and devotees of Shiva, but Lord mm -hmm. Shiva is also a devotee of Krishna. Yeah. And that's so true, Prabhuji. And I'm sorry, apologies if I'm digressing a bit, but at that last point you made that that kind of uh, 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 that that relates to something I came across just this morning because um, we were reading the ten offenses uh, to the holy name, and the second one or the third one, which says that you know you shouldn't think of um, uh, Lord Shiva uh, or Lord Brahma to be saying as Lord Vishnu. Um, and so there was a conversation between some of us, as you know, whereas some of the others were saying that, you know, in one way we have um, um, Hara and Hari being almost the same, where, where we talk about um, Sadashiva being the same as uh, uh, Vishnu and being in Vishnu Tattva. And then why is that, uh, you know, then we are saying that Shiva uh, shouldn't be the same. And also at the same time, Shiva is a, um, he's, he's a, he's a Mahajan. Um, so that is, uh, that's, uh, that's not as great as Vishnu. So it's still a devotee, a great exalted devotee of Vishnu. So a Mahajan, but still not Vishnu. Um, so there was a conversation around all of this. So um, I think what you just mentioned just now, um, we'll, I'll take that information back to them as well. Yes, yes. And it's a, uh, what, what was I, I going to say? Because sometimes people directly ask. They say, oh, yeah. do I have about my puja of Ganeshji? And depending who it is, you know, uh, but many times it's better that we don't say no. Mm -hmm. Instead, we keep that up, uh, you know, go on learning about Krishna and chant Bhaja for Ganesh. Yeah. Yeah. That way they, they don't they can understand they can understand how to relate your previous practice with with uh, Krishna Bhakti. Mm. Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Any other comments or questions? I know it's getting late. Hare Krishna, are there any comments or questions? Yes, Hare, Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Um just following on that question, um didn't Lord Brahma, after his meditation, actually saw the spiritual world and described it in the Bhagavatam? Yes, very good. Brahma Samhita. He has given 30, 40 verses in the Brahma Samhita. That's another uh, text that we can that was given to us by Srila Prabhupada. Yes, from Lord Brahma's direct experience. Very good. Thank you, Thank you. Hare Krishna. There are no more questions or comments, then we can end the session. Uh, can I request Panchali uh, Mataji to kindly end this session? Is it possible for you to do that? Hare Krishna Mataji, I'll try, but I'm not sure if I can glorify Prabhuji enough. Uh, so Thank you very much, uh, Prabhuji, for the wonderful classes always. Um, apologies for missing some of them recently, but that was due to festivals over here. Uh, but you took us um, really nicely through um, verses 6 and 7 of uh, um, Canto 1, Chapter 8 of Srimad Bhagavatam, um, uh, uh, telling us more uh, about uh, the relationship we have with Krishna, how Krishna is um, not impartial uh, to anybody, but he has uh, a special place in his heart for his devotees. Um, and you also talked about the spiritual world and uh, 
um, and, and the material world and the different relationships that we can have with Krishna and aspire to have with Krishna. So thank you very much indeed, Prabhuji, for the wonderful class. Um, so I also thank the devotees who have been, who are here today um, um, and um, for the wonderful comments and questions by some of you. If I can um, kindly request all of you to um, unmute yourself and glorify uh, Prabhuji uh, for, uh, for his wonderful session. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Jai. His Grace the Nasharan Prabhuji Ki. Jai. All the assembled devotees, Ki Jai. 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 I make an attempt to be a servant. Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna.